Great. Well, this will be an interesting experiment using a microphone on a separate audio track. A little bit of Hamlet, of course. Whither wilt thou lead me? Speak. I'll go no further. Mark me. I will. My hour is about come when I to sulfurous and tormenting flames render up myself. Alas, poor ghost, pity me not, but lend your serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak, I'm bound to hear, so art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast and fires, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold, whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars star from their spheres, thy knotted and combined locks to part, and each particular hair to stand on in like quills upon the fretful porcupine. But this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood. List, list, O oh list. If thou didst ever thy dear father love, O oh God, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul, as in the best it is. But this most foul, strange and unnatural, haste me to know it, that I, with wings as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love, may sweep to my revenge. Hmm, I find thee apt, and duller shouldst thou be than the fat weed that roots itself in ease on Lethe Wharf. Wouldst thou not stir in this? Now, Hamlet, here, tis given out that I, sleeping in my orchard, was stung by a serpent. So the whole ear of Denmark is by a forged process of my death, rankly abused. But know thy noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life, now wears the crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle. I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts, O oh, wicked wit and gifts, one to a shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. O oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there from me, whose love was of that dignity that it went hand in hand, even with the vow I made to her in marriage, and to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor to those of mine. But virtue, as it never will be moved, though lewdness courted in a shape of heaven, so lust, though to a radiant angel linked, will sate itself in a celestial bed and prey on garbage. But soft, methinks, I sent the morning air. Brief let me be. Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed hebana in a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment, whose effect holds such enmity with blood of man that swift is quicksilver. It courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body, and with a sudden vigor it doth posit and curd, like eager droppings into milk, the thin and wholesome blood. 
so did it mine, and in a most instant tetter barked about. Most lazar-like, with vile and loathsome crust, all of my soft body. Thus was I, sleeping by a brother's hand, of love, of crown, of queen at once dispatched, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin, unhouseled, disappointed, unannealed, no reckoning made, but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible, oh, horrible, most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch of, for luxury and damned incest. Now, howsomever thou pursue this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Fare thee well at once. The glowworm shows the marten to be near and gins to pale his uneffectual fire. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Remember me.